All right, Poker Junkies, our guest today is an EPT High Roller Champion, winner of the first ever Shark Cage for a whopping one million bucks, and he's one of the faces of the newly minted Global Poker League. His face all over Twitch these days, broadcasting all the action, and believe me, there's been lots of action so far in the early days of the GPL. His lifetime winnings, are you ready for this? $6.5 million, according to Pocketfives.com. Griffin Benger, welcome to the show, man. Thanks for being a high roller. <laughs> uh, you're welcome. You're very welcome. That actually reminds me, I, I, I had this inside joke when I first started playing high rollers when, you know, people would be outside on breaks and all the high rollers like, you know, Igor Kurganov, Timothy Adams, and, uh, you know, Steve O'Dwyer, and they'd all be sort of talking hands. And I'd just sort of like float in there and I'd be like, oh, guys, well, this is high roller conversation? Like, let's talk, let's talk high roller strategy. Like, oh, this is, we're such high rollers, guys. Like, <laughs> That's how you decide to open for me. It's, it's been a running gag for, for me and my some like my, my former player colleagues, I guess. It feels like, from my vantage point, you're living the dream. So that is what a high roller is all about. Yeah, I mean, to be honest with you, like I'm, I'm happy that I kind of got out of the playing aspect when I did. I'm, I'm living the dream now. I'm, I'm, I'm out here in Malta doing the Global Poker League. I've never been happier. You know, poker can be a very, you know, feast or famine lifestyle. I, I find especially, uh, you know, on the tournament circuit, multi-table tournament circuit. So um, I'm, I'm, I'm super happy to be where I am now, sort of in, you know, in the booth. I guess it kind of depends what kind of animal you are and, and, and where you are in your life. I mean, poker, you know, like I said, on, when I won the Shark Cage, it's been a very rewarding thing for me, but it's it's also something that's kind of, you know, it's it's been swingy when it comes to my how it's affected my life. And, um, yeah, I'm just really happy to be where I am now. Before we talk about the GPL, I'm wondering your thoughts on that big fight last night, the six-figure prop bet MMA fight between J.C. Alvarado and Olivia Bousquet. Did you watch? Were you betting on it? I watched every single second. Um, I bet uh, uh, you know a couple hundred bucks with a with a friend of mine that I that I knew would take JC because I'm you know uh, first of all I'm a huge fan of Olivier Bousquet because for a, for a multitude of reasons. I mean he's someone you should get on if you haven't already got him on here, and, and uh, I'll certainly tell him you should come on with you because uh, he loves you know doing interviews and stuff. But he's um, to say I knew something is so so absurd. But like it's just when you know that there's someone that's just you know, when they dedicate themselves to something that they accomplish their goals. And if anything, he was going to be, he was never going to be a huge, like, underdog in anything that he undertakes uh, of, the, of that nature. You know, whether it's poker, whether it's, uh, you know, lifestyle, whether it's, um, you know, uh, his, you know, taking care of his body. I mean, I just, I'm a huge, huge, huge Livy Bousquet fan. I'm, you know, very, very grateful to count him as a friend. Yeah, I, I bet a couple hundred bucks on him and, and, and it was uh, it was great. I understand there was over a million bucks wagered on that fight last night in the poker community. Lots of side action. Now, I was watching on Periscope, and one of the comments that popped up was, quote, the poker community is weird. Assume that was from a non-poker player trying to make sense of it all. How would you describe poker and its players, the community, as compared to, say, other industries? I don't think you're going to see a six-figure fight between insurance brokers. I would actually describe it as fucking weird. I don't know if I'm allowed to swear on the thing. Absolutely. <laughs> Yeah, I, I mean, to be honest with you, it wouldn't surprise me if it was a poker player or it wasn't a poker player. I mean, the whole, it is really, really weird, man. Like, I, like I'm I'm very um, disconnected from it now in the sense that uh, I'm not as close with some of the guys that I was, uh, you know, sort of grinding with. And I'm a very all or nothing person that way. You know, like when I was really into it, I was talking to these guys every day and all this sort of stuff. But yeah, it's, it's, it's super weird. I mean, there's so many great people that I've met in poker, but it's, it creates these weird, um, you know, it, the desensitization to money, not really understanding the value of a dollar. You know, the kind of freedom that it gives you is almost this double-edged sword where it can, you know, can make you really unbelievably lazy unless you have the right habits. You know, not everyone is Martin Jakobsen and Olivia Bousquet. Like, a lot of these guys, you know, for example, um, you know, the Joe McKeons or what have you, you know, these guys, all they've had to do is just, you know, play cards to make to make a living and just do whatever they want. I mean, I take nothing away from Joe McKeon. I think that... Uh, He's a really interesting guy because he's someone who is so unforgiving about who he is and is not going to put on a monkey suit or even shave uh, for you know for other people and that's that's his prerogative absolutely. But I definitely think it it, it, it can be a breeding grounds for bad habits, which I have personally um, you know I, like definitely um, had over the course of my career career at different points, just being unkempt, out of shape, you know, depressed. But it can also like you know like I said, it's been a gift. It's all about how you. You know, sort of translated, I think. Well said, man. Listen, 
the Global Poker League now. My thoughts are that you guys have had a pretty good first three weeks. Can you talk about the GPL, its goals, and how do you think it's gone so far? I think it's gone great. You know, I came in here with the kind of expectations of that I was going to elevate the product, that I was going to make it as good as it could be through me and not, you know, not obviously full responsibility. There's so many people involved. Um, you know, Eric, Danny, the, like the kind of work that this guy does with the stats and also, you know, being in the lounge, uh, you know, uh, my, my, my friend Max is just, he's doing eight jobs. Everyone's working so hard at the office to make this thing a reality, but that was always my, my, my prerogative to just get out here and just, you know, be the best version of myself for the global poker league. And, and for myself, and and you know, obviously there were some hiccups in the first few days, um, and you know there still are a few weeks in. This is you know this is a learning process. I think we're still in kind of the teething period of of the whole thing. But you know, I really do think that show to show and week to week that we are getting much better and better. And really, really excited for the future of uh, of the league and the future uh, for myself as a broadcaster. You talked about Igor Kurganov, Olivier Bousquet. I mean, you've got Elky, you've got Jungle Man, you've got so many great players in this league. Uh, it really is exciting to watch. And by the way, they're not playing for money. There might be some side action, but it's nice to see that these guys are that competitive when there's nothing on the line except pride. They really do care. Yeah, that's that's the other thing too. Is that before I came on to the GPL, I definitely had become very jaded with the the nature of, of poker and and you know how like I said feast, and, feast or famine it can be you know a lot of people in the community um, you know whether you're fans or people outside of it you know they see this as, as this glamorous lifestyle that everyone's a millionaire and you know it's not like that you know it's it's a lot of people are broke a lot of people are unhappy and you know it's it's certainly ne- not necessarily the overwhelming uh, majority but it's it's it can be a very it can be a very dark dark place. Now, with the GPL, of course, we have 72 of the you know the best players in the world. So that's not necessarily um, you know the kind of players that are in the league. But it's 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 you know coming into this, I was very I, I didn't I didn't feel great about you know tournament poker in general and what what it was doing to people that I knew, what it did to myself. So to be able to just come in as you know the way you talk about yourself, just being a poker fan and just being able to enjoy the characters and the thought process of the true savants of the game, because. Um, I I really feel like poker can be a very deceptive thing, you know, because success is such a deceptive thing. It can really make you feel like a a god one day and, and, you know, nothing the next. So to be able to just come in here and just kind of be a fan and just to talk about it and really just like be like, wow, this is amazing. Listen to this thought process. Wow, like this guy's brain is incredible or this guy is such a character and we would never know this if it wasn't for this webcam feature. Do you know what I mean? So I, I, um... Yeah, I think it's 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 absolutely brilliant. Igor, for instance, close personal friend of mine. I, I, I count him as someone that I can always call. So he's it's great to see him and that beautiful you know forest backdrop. It's just it's just there's so much to, to offer at the GPL. I think. Correct me if I'm wrong, but on the topic of you know poker taking people to these weird places because you're in a casino all the time and maybe you're grinding twelve hours a day online. But when you look at a guy like Alex on the moon. Seems like he's made it, he's living a good lifestyle, he's got the wine bottles in the background, and then there's Jungle Man, coughing, kind of, you know, disheveled, uh, pissed off all the time, I mean, it's side of, one side to the other. That's the other thing, too, is that there's this, there's this huge spectrum where, you know, you never know who's going to really fall where, I mean, Jungle Man is clearly an absolute savant, like, he is just unbelievable genius level, I mean, I think anyone who has experience with poker and, and much perspective will know that like his you know lack of success is you know kind of an aberration and that's that's kind of what makes it so funny because you know he's someone that could easily have just been like the MVP and sweeping the board and then you know a couple of things don't go his way a few misclicks a few hand misreads some bad beats some you know some lost flips some coolers and uh, you know some frustration and suddenly he's like you know the um, uh, the goat of the league kind of thing it's, it's, it's a bit it's a you know it's crazy and that's you know that's also why I feel that the GPL is sportifying poker because it is creating those narratives that it's just like, you know, well, some of the things that make sports great is that, you know, of course you have these figures that are so incredible at their craft, but you know, they're, they are fallible and they can fail and they can be, you know, there can be underdogs that overtake them. And of course, what makes poker such a, such a, even more compelling than say like tennis is that, you know, um, Derek Oliver is never going to come into, you know, go on the, on the, um, on the links with, you know, Roy McElroy and, and, and take nine holes from him. You know what I mean? Right. But in this, you can just sit down, 
you can play against Igor Kurganov, you can play against Jungle Man, you can play against whoever, and you know you can win two or three matches from them. And that's what makes um, you know the Aaron Paul thing possible too. I mean, how many sp- sports can you really say like, yeah, like a celebrity can play this and compete? I think it's a really fascinating. Um, you know, it's, it almost makes it to me more of a sport than most sports. You know, I, I maybe maybe it makes it something completely different. I don't know, but um, the fact that I'm in the process of exploring that is is something that's very special to me. Well, as a fan, uh, one thing I like that the GPL is doing is listening to its players and viewers with respect to the presentation, the webcam suggestions for that. I mean, you guys are listening, and the and the broadcast is getting better each and every week. I'm just wondering about the webcam. Uh, that's added a, a great dynamic through Twitch. I mean, the Elky Jungle Man match was epic yesterday. You guys had to do little work with Jonathan Little. I mean, there's a peek inside a WPT superstar's mind. Yeah, yeah, it's amazing. I mean, you know, oh, wow. There's just been so many people that I've I've learned so much from. And, and that I've, you know, that I've borrowed things from. I've, I've always prided myself in having, you know, like, I have, I have like, you know, like an idyllic memory and the way I can sort of translate information. I feel like that's really what made me successful in poker. Um, and the fact that I have this, like, you know, learning tool, even for myself, if I decide that I do want to play poker, um, you know, whether it's professionally or just recreationally, I feel like it's elevating my game and my understanding of things to uh, a degree I didn't think possible. So that's, that's certainly fun for me. Um, so I can only imagine for, you know, the fans at home, whether, whatever stakes you may play, there's so much to learn. And just and, and not even just, you know, as a teaching tool, the GPL, because that's really not obviously not the initiative. But entertainment wise, I mean, these these guys are really interesting characters. And it's hard to I mean, you know, poker players are predominantly some of the most you know lazy people out there. I mean, they're, they, they, they stumble into this, you know, wild success and all they have to do is sit at the computer with a mouse. You know, it's a lot of people see it as like they're kind of living the dream in a lot of ways they are. So to get inside, you know, the home and the mind of people like that and seeing what makes them tick and seeing what, you know, upsets them and seeing what makes them laugh and seeing what makes them smile. You know, you look at uh, Sergey Lebedev the other day with his beautiful wife on, on, on the air in the interview. You look at Sam Trickett and, you know, uh, Jason Mercier with their with their little puppies that obviously, you know, their dogs that make them – you know, that bring a light to their life. You know, it's, I think it's a, it's such a special uh, thing that Alex Dreyfus and the GPL has kind of stumbled into. I mean, maybe this was, you know, I, I think, uh, I think Alex Dreyfus is a genius, but I don't, don't know if he really foresaw it, that it could be, you know, this, this good. I mean, you know, his, his wife described it, I think on a post on Facebook the other day when they first launched as the, you know, he woke up in the middle of the night one night I guess years ago, whatever it was, and had this crazy idea, and so many people told him it was a bad idea, and you know, so many of the poker cynics out there said that thought it was it would be a joke, and the fact that he believed in himself and believed in this thing that he was doing so much, you know, I think it's a it's a very inspiring thing for me personally. So it's it's just it's really really important to me and, and great that I'm that I'm, that I'm able to be a part of it. My my perception is this, Griffin, and and. Uh, real quick, two more questions. My perception is this, that you seem a bit jaded on poker, that the GPL has rejuvenated you. Um, Absolutely. But you have had a lot of success in poker and uh, two very, very special moments, I guess the high roller in Berlin and then the shark cage. Can you take us back and, and quickly summarize what you were feeling in, on those occasions? Um, yeah, sure. I mean, you know, it's funny. I, the fact that someone who won a, one, a million dollar free roll, I'm sure the listeners and you are must be thinking, well, like, what an ungrateful prick this guy is. And I, that's, I'm, I certainly hope I'm not giving that too much off. I mean, obviously, you know, a million dollars is is a uh, kind of money that changes people's lives and that, you know, I, maybe I should be praising the game for the end of time. But, the, you know, it's, it's never really that simple. Um, I was, wasn't was a great period of my life when I won the Shark Cage um, for a bunch of different reasons and a personal level. And, um, you know, it's never as, as simple as, you know, as adver- as advertised when it comes to just like, you know, winning that kind of money. It doesn't matter what capacity, whether it's a free roll or whether you're back or this and that. Like there's always there's always something, you know, behind the scenes where it's like you're never making as much as you are. So, I mean, it was it was a beautiful experience in the sense that like I overcame at the time some really um, bad personal news from back home pretty much five hours before I went on. So that was like, I guess, sort of a personal triumph for me which was obviously super rewarding, but Berlin was really much more special to me and the culmination of so much hard work and dedication um, and, you know, putting all of, you know, what I'd learned and what I'd observed to work, you know, and, and it was just, it was this beautiful kind of, I mean, 
I'm a huge sort of like movie, like narrative kind of geek. And the way that everything happened with Berlin, you know, right before I'd left, I'd, I'd fallen in love with this beautiful girl from back home that I went to school with. And I went out there and she kind of became my muse over the course of this tournament where she was, you know, being like, oh, you know, I love you. You're doing great. This and that. And that kind of inspired me. And I had these, you know, ebbs and flows where I was just crushing on day one, running so good, finishing with an absurd amount of chips coming into day two. And then like this villain showed up, Martin Cabral, who's this super high stakes, you know, kind of genius IQ guy that was on my left that was just beating up on me and kind of like making me feel like, you know, I wasn't as good as I really was. I, there was this one hand, he just destroyed me with where he three bet aces, and I just called him down and lost like 80% of my stack in a spot that I should just never be even calling the three bet, and I felt like a fraud. And then I ran it back up again, and then I was on the, you know, final table bubble, and I won a big flip. And then, you know, I started looking at the prize pool and like how much I could win. And my backer was like so close to, be, you know, being, I remember he, he was so close to his, for his net worth kind of thing to be a certain amount of money that was really important to him. And I was just like, if I win this, like he gets there. Like there were so many different, different little things about it. Um, and uh, and then on the final table, you know, me and, and, and Martin Cabral just battling and he'd been kind of bullying me. And then I had this moment where I kind of just like fought back and, and then and then he had this sort of alpha male thing where he would kind of talk trash to you and make you feel like you were, I mean, this was all part of his sort of like thing, you know what I mean? His game flow thing. And then I kind of like shot back at him with like a comment at the final table when I started getting some momentum and then I knocked him out and then, and then I won the tournament. And, and I remember coming back to the room and this, this tournament, you know, I, I had, I'd won a hundred thousand dollars, maybe one, one other time. And I went back to the room with the 600, $560,000 score, what have you, whatever, 430 euro. And I remember getting up to the room and it was just, it was weird because, I, you know, I, I obviously, you know, to some I have a reputation of being a bit of a party animal and everyone thought it was like, okay, like, you know, you're going to go crazy now, you're going to have a wild one. And um, we didn't, we just went and got some sort of, it was just such a whirlwind and I was so exhausted by the end of it that we all just, I remember my, my backer put on a suit because I, he, there was this like big thing for him that like this happened and we all had a couple of drinks and just talked about, you know, life and love and, and just, you know, and I, as soon as I won, I called my girlfriend and she'd never been outside of Canada before. And I was like, I'm flying you down here. We're going to go to Monaco and San Remo. And like, it was just this, it was this amazing kind of beautiful, um, story that, 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 that happened to me in my life. And I, when I got back to the room, you know, like at two, three o'clock in the morning when everyone else would be assuming I was, you know, out partying, going wild, it was just me and this like, you know, gold trophy and this beautiful Shambhala bracelet and I just remember sort of placing it down, you know, sort of on the desk in front of the bed. And I just, you know, I just burst out crying. I was just, it was such a, and I remember just laying back on the bed and I was just like bawling my eyes out because it was, it's just this, this culmination of so much, you know, I don't want to say hard work because it was always such a game and so fun to me. You know, I don't want, I don't want to send the wrong message to the kids at home, you know, work hard and do well. I mean, I showed up to this interview an hour late. <laughs> for anything I've just I've done what you know what I'm passionate about and what I love and I think that's where the hard work should come from from a work of passion you know it was just a beautiful moment for me personally um and obviously you can tell I have a lot more to say about that than I do this this free role that I have a lot of sort of negative uh feelings about you know not not any way with the experience with you know poker stars I mean everyone involved is so great and it was so cool being heads up against Mike Tindall and everything like that but you're going to be a victim of your circumstances in life and I was an, I was a very sad person at that period of my life and all of my happiness was derived from poker success and I'd gotten like I said I'd gotten some bad news from back home and and it was I was I was wearing a mask I was um, I was putting on a show and it's it's you know it's an interesting insight when you, you sort of if you want to rewatch it and I'm you know getting the high fives from the rail and you know I seem happy as happy as you know pig and shit but I was I was miserable even when I won it so it's um it's really interesting and amazing how you know people's perspectives the way they can be and things like that. We're gonna end it right there, man. That was a great story, Griffin Benger. Thank you so much, man. Continued success. And let's hope this uh, Global Poker League does sportify poker. The rivalries are building because it really is fun to watch. Thanks, Derek.